When confronted with a stressful or dangerous situation, the body responds with a fight or flight response. The physical response to a stressor that readies the body to physically face or flee from that stressor. The fight or flight response is initiated by the sympathetic nervous system, the part of the nervous system that readies the body for action, and is regulated by a system called the HPA axis, a stress signaling system composed of the hypothalamus, pituitary gland, and adrenal glands. The hypothalamus signals the pituitary gland to release hormones to communicate with the adrenal glands, signaling them to release adrenaline into the bloodstream. Adrenaline increases our heart rate and respiration, and decreases functions that are not immediately essential to survival, like digestion. Adrenaline is just one of the many corticosteroids, a major class of hormones produced by the adrenal cortex. The body's response to stressors is also called the General Adaptation Syndrome, or GAS a three-phase response to a stressor that includes alarm, resistance, and exhaustion. In the alarm stage, the HPA axis is activated in response to a stressor. In the resistance phase, the body works to counteract the stressor. And finally, in the exhaustion phase, the reaction shuts down. For example, imagine you're walking in the woods and you encounter a snake. Your sympathetic nervous system and HPA axis are activated. You then sprint in the other direction to avoid danger, your body sustaining the elevated heart and respiration rates necessary for you to escape. And then finally, when you're a safe distance away, your breathing slows and you regain your composure. But what if you're facing a stressor that you can't flee from, like marital conflict, unemployment, or financial worries? Even though you can't run away from these problems like you would a snake, your body still reacts the same way, and this can lead to chronic or long-term stress. In the short term, corticosteroids like adrenaline and cortisol can be helpful, but their continued release in response to chronic stress can damage the heart and circulatory systems, leading to high blood pressure, heart disease, and strokes. Stress also takes a toll on the immune system, a complex network of organs that contain cells used to recognize pathogens in the body. Corticosteroids decrease the number of lymphocytes, white blood cells that assist in the immune response. Two types of lymphocytes affected are T cells, which identify infected cells in the body and destroy them, and B cells, which release disease-fighting antibodies into the bloodstream to fight infection. When the number of these cells decreases, it results in people being more vulnerable to viral and bacterial infections. Chronic stress can increase the likelihood of acid reflux or ulcers, and decrease nutrient absorption and increase the risk for diabetes. It can lead to inflammation of the joints and muscles, which can cause pain. And it can depress the release of dopamine, leading to a depressed mood and irritability. So although the physical response to stress is critical for survival in immediately threatening situations, often people experience a more enduring chronic type of stress that slowly erodes the normal functioning of the body. From head to toe, the physical response to stress affects the brain, the digestive system, the reproductive system, joints, muscles, and skin, in addition to the cardiovascular and immune systems, which can have devastating effects.